What's up guys, it's Daryl here and welcome to my YouTube channel. I've been wanting to start a YouTube channel for a long, long time, but I always put it off because I was waiting for the right time. I realize you can only be so ready before there comes to a point where you just have to start. There's been so many times where I watch other creators who make amazing content and I've thought to myself, how exactly did they get here? What were they doing before this? And I love hearing other people's stories because it allows me to see them as human and not just this unattainable goal. Because the reality is, everyone has to start somewhere. And maybe you're watching this because you're a bit unsure of your next step in life. And maybe you want to start creating content or doing something along those lines. So I wanted to make this video to document my journey in hopes that you can at least relate with one thing that I've gone through. And I hope it gives a bit of insight as to what I was doing before I became a full-time content creator so that you can start because no one was really just born with a skill to create content or be good at something. A lot of the times it's just a matter of learning it and giving it a shot. And just a disclaimer, I have no idea what I'm doing sometimes. I feel so new in this whole creative space and sometimes it just feels like I'm making it up as I go. But I guess that's just a part of the journey. So this is me starting and hopefully this will be my first YouTube video of many. Growing up in Perth, which if you didn't know is the most isolated major city in the whole world. Like, we're so far from everyone. I'm talking a 25 hour flight just to get to New York. But Perth has beautiful beaches, restaurants, and most importantly, my friends and family are here. And I think the thing I love most about Perth is that it makes me feel comfortable. But I think being comfortable sometimes is the reason why I feel capped and unable to really pursue the things that I've wanted to. The lifestyle here in Perth is pretty simple. Most of us graduate high school, we go to uni, get an internship and then we get a job and more often than not we're usually set for the next 20 30 years of our lives but for some reason that idea of a life never really sat well with me and so let's go back a little bit I've always struggled with what I wanted to do my entire life people often refer to me as a jack-of-all-trades as there were a lot of things I could do but there was nothing I really excelled at after graduating high school I still had no idea what I wanted to do and so I took a stab in the dark and said you know what let me just study marketing and it was tough at times seeing the people around me get internships at big corporations, going to networking events, and building their resumes. But I never really wanted to go down that path. Despite this realization of what I didn't want to do, I still had no idea what I wanted to do. I knew I liked a lot of things, but nothing really stood out to me that could lead to a career. I enjoyed being active, playing sports, basketball, in the gym, but I was never going to be a professional athlete. I learned drums, guitar, piano, but I knew I was never going to be a musician. And I enjoyed fashion, but I never thought I'd start my own brand or model. And so nothing really seemed feasible, and so I continued on my path of doing what everyone else was doing. Eventually I graduated uni, worked in retail, and I got a sales job selling outdoor blinds and roller shutters. I know, it's really random. And although the job was exciting at the start, I realized I was only doing it for the sake of money. And I started feeling tired, uninspired, and overall pretty sad. Because each day was passing and it felt like I was just doing the same thing day in and day out. But there came a day where I decided to change that. Essentially my day would revolve around appointments and so I'd have an appointment at 10 a.m., 1 p.m., 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. And in between those appointments I pretty much had nothing else to do. And so I thought to myself, why not just take some outfit photos? And so the night before my shift in 2020, I packed two or three outfits, I brought my tripod with me and in between appointments, I went to go take some photos. I had also started my Instagram account during that time and it was mainly for me just to post things I like, sort of like a mood board. And so I set a schedule to post at least once a week and from April onwards, I stuck to that. And I know there's some of you that hate the idea of taking photos in public. And as much as I'd like to think that I don't care, deep down, it still kind of gets to me. But I was fortunate enough to find this place. So I'm heading to the spot where I took a lot of my fit pics when I first started. So yeah, I'll show you guys around. Alright, so here we are at the spot where the magic happened. So this used to be a food court, but it got shut down during the pandemic. And I actually stumbled upon it by driving around the area. I noticed there was a back alley, and when I came through, I pretty much saw all of this. There's nice concrete walls, really good lighting, and most importantly, no one is here. This is pretty much where I used to take my fit pics. Figured why not? Take some fit pics here now.
So yeah, this is where I did a lot of my filming. I was so lucky to find this abandoned food court. I don't know if that is a common thing that happens. But yeah, if you remember some of my old posts, um, you definitely recognize some of the background. Thought I'd just show you guys what it looked like. And so I think it's really important to have a space where you can produce this content. If you're not as shy taking photos in public, I'd definitely say go ahead and do that. But if you're like me and you get a bit self-conscious sometimes, I definitely recommend trying to find somewhere or even creating a space. A lot of my filming I do in my room, and so I feel comfortable with that. But yeah, I think just be creative. Just make sure you've got good lighting, a nice background. Just play around with it, mix it up, switch it up, have fun. But yeah, that's all I have to say. I'll see you guys back home. Let's take a look at my very first Instagram outfit photo. So back in January 2021, this is when I posted this photo here. And it was a pretty decent fit, Western 70s sort of style. And overall, it did not bad. And I'd say from April onwards, I stuck to my schedule of posting at least once every three to four days. And in June, I had posted this photo here. It was a pretty simple outfit, Carhartt jacket, ALD fitted cap, custom cargo pants, and some Air Force Ones. But it was doing a lot better than any of my previous posts. And one day I woke up to a notification that I had been tagged in something and to my surprise I had been featured on the Grailed Instagram account and I remember just feeling so stoked and blown away that this even happened and I thought to myself okay if I can get reposted on an account this big I'm sure I can get reposted on other ones and that's exactly what I did. I spent the next few months dedicated to getting my outfits reposted by as many accounts as possible. And throughout this whole period, I was still working at my sales job, still feeling unhappy and still unsatisfied with my life. However, on September the 12th, 2021, I decided to change that. I woke up to a call from my manager asking me to head to an appointment about one hour away. I was so tired at that point and all the driving was making me go crazy, but I packed my stuff and headed to the appointment. After a few hours with the customer, I left again without the sale. And I sometimes wonder if I'd made the sale whether things would have been different but I guess we'll never know. I got my phone out, I called my manager, and I told him I quit, that I had learned everything I needed to learn, but my time at this job had come to an end. And I had been debating about this decision for months, but that day was the day I finally made the decision. And I remember just feeling a weight lifted off my shoulders that day because it felt like I finally had control over my life again, like I was in charge the whole time. And I didn't actually quit to pursue content creation full time. I did it so that I could have my freedom back because I always knew that there were consequences to any decision I would make. I could stay at that job and keep a stable income, but lose my happiness and my joy. Or I could quit, lose my financial stability, but gain freedom and control in my life again. And I remember a thought where I had envisioned myself staying in this job for another five years. And I had a feeling that I just wouldn't like the person that I would have become. The decision of quitting was a risk I was willing to take. One month later, I had hit my goal of 10,000 followers. And it was such a huge milestone for me because it felt like I had built something from nothing. And I think it's super important when you're starting out, even when you've established an audience, that you keep evolving and you keep learning how to grow your skills. Don't be afraid to emulate other creators and make it your own because it's really hard at the start to know exactly what your style is. And you just have to try a lot of different things until you find that. And if you can do all these little things and grow and find your own style, you will see your account grow. And now we come to 2022, one of the craziest years of my life. I no longer had a job. It felt different. It felt like years of worrying about what I was going to do in my life no longer mattered. I had come to terms with just figuring it out along the way and letting myself just live. It was also the year that I finally decided to do something that I'd been wanting to do for years. And that was travel by myself. And so I did it. You know that feeling when you're so afraid of something? But you know deep down, it's the very thing you need to get to the next level. To put yourself in something so uncomfortable that you are forced to grow. I knew I needed to get out of Perth so I could really see what else was out there. I felt so stuck in the ideas that surrounded me that it meant changing those very environments so that my vision could be expanded. Being all alone in a place that I had never been before meant that I had to figure it out, that I had to find a way.
I'd come back feeling refreshed and inspired to create. The people I'd met, the things I'd experienced, and the confidence I had in myself that I would do the things that I said I would do. All these things shaped me in a huge way, and it helped me just see that more was possible. A goal of 100k at the time which seemed impossible was just really a matter of doing what I had done before, because it's only crazy until it happens. And I spent the next few months figuring out how to get to the big 100k. After watching countless hours of Instagram strategy and how to grow your account, I'd gathered that there was really just one thing that I needed to do. Reels and video. They were single-handedly the one thing that brought me from 10,000 to 100,000 followers. And it worked. And exactly one year from the point I hit 10,000 followers, I hit that goal of 100,000. And I can go into detail about the types of reels I made if you guys want to see that. But in reality, the one thing that I say helped me was just allowing myself to create. I've been reading this book called The Artisan Soul by Owen McManus. And he talks about this idea of how creating is the very nature of what it means to be human. But somewhere down the line, we bought into this idea of simply following the rules and doing what we're told that we lost the ability to create. We doubt whether we can even create and we leave creating for the artists of the world. And to be honest with you, there's been so many times where I feel like I'm just not creative and that it's not for me. And sometimes it feels like I'm a fraud in a world of really creative people. But that's simply just another lie that I bought into. And if you're watching this still, I want this video to show how a regular guy like me turned something small into something that I am genuinely proud of. It took time and it took consistency, but most importantly, it took a conscious decision in my head that said, I am capable of creating. Despite how magnificent the best creators were, it didn't mean that I couldn't create or that I couldn't start. It might not always be polished or pretty, but it's the act of actually starting that counts. And if this video just does one thing, I hope that it gives you the courage to start. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I would love to hear your comments and thoughts down below. Um, so yeah, let me know and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.